backlight in landscapes is the most beautiful during the so-called golden hours, shortly after sunrise or shortly before sunset. And that it is not that difficult to paint, I will show you in this video. And welcome back to Art for Everybody. My name is Evi Steiner Böhm. I'm an artist from Germany and I also have two little assistants who are called Pedro and Rosa. And now, without further ado, let's get going. Let's have a look at the material first that I'm going to use. Um, as a painting surface, I'm going to use carton, which I usually prepare like this. I cover it with a sort of brownish acrylic color from both sides because I mostly use it for painting with oil paints. Uh, but since acrylics are not quite as opaque as oils, I have covered my uh, painting surface again with a light yellow because then it is easier to get the very light colors with acrylics. And on my palette, I've put today titanium white, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, purple, burnt sienna, Prussian blue, and cyan. And as brushes, I'm going to use these bristle brushes. And what I find very useful are these angular uh, brushes because with them you can blend the colors into each other and also you can make very fine lines with them. For my painting I'm going to use the two reference photos that you can see now. They are both taken from my studio window and aren't necessarily very interesting compositions for a landscape painting. So what I'm going to do is, what I often do, I take the references as suggestions and make my own landscape of them. If you design a landscape, the easiest way is what you do with all other motifs as well. You divide your painting surface into thirds, both vertically and horizontally. Approximately, doesn't have to be very exact. And yet, then you get four intersections. And one of these intersections should be the focal point of your painting. And in my case, this is going to be the sun, which has just risen above the hills in the background. And I want this to be here later in my painting. Now, as you can see, you, you have hills in the background and about here there is the hedge um, of my garden, but I'm going to leave that out. And I want the very big tree around here to cover this third of my painting surface. And I want the, the trees that you can see on the second uh, photograph on the left side. I want these closer to my uh, bigger tree. And I also want them to rise above the hills in the background. And keep it a little further up. Maybe take this one a little further down so that you have distinct sizes from big middle and small. And the hills can be around here. And now I'm going to leave out the hedge of my garden and pretend that there is a meadow which goes into the background to the hills up here. And I can have the light flooding from the sun down to the meadow. 
so that you have um, the light going to the focal point into your painting. And the hills in the background, of course, have to be very small. They are about here. So one of the, the most frequent questions uh, with landscape paintings is, where do I start? Do I start with the sky or with the lightest part or the darkest parts? Um, and quite honestly, I don't think there is a rule that will help you make better paintings. I always do as I feel in the moment. And sometimes I start with the lightest parts, sometimes with the darkest parts. So I don't have a rule. But in this case, I want to paint the sky first because I want to have the sun, my focal point. I want to see that when I do the rest of the painting. So the sky is really easy to paint. You have the very white spot of the sun, which is not a ball, mind you. But if you look into the sun, it's kind of irregular. So it's simply a, a white spot. And around my white spot, I, uh, I mix the titanium white with the lemon yellow and get a very, very light sort of yellowish white. And then I gradually add uh, the warmer colors and that's the cadmium yellow and the cadmium orange, but keep it all very light so that you get the impression of, uh, of blazing sunlight. So I uh, finished the sky now and you probably noticed that I put many layers upon each other and that's the big advantage of acrylics that you can paint over them very quickly and these layers make that you have very very tiny nuances in your colors and they make a painting really interesting. Um, and in the next step now, I'm going to do most of the darks of my painting. And I'm going to use a very warm, dark color here in the foreground and a sort of more bluish, more violet color in the background because that's one of the most important rules in landscape painting that in the background, colors are paler, meaning you have to add white, and they are bluer, meaning that they are cooler in color, so that the warm colors come in the foreground and the cooler colors go into the background. And I'm going to mix the very dark colors here in the foreground with my Prussian blue and the burnt sienna, and also with a little blue and with the cadmium orange. And I put the dark colors very roughly on my tree along the, uh, the trunk and the branches or where I think uh, they are going to be very dark later. And I will do the fine details in the second step. And for the background, I simply make the colors lighter, can be the same mixture, but simply add a lot more white here. And I'm going to do the same with the lighter colors now, with all the yellows and the more orange colors here, where the sun shines through these trees and also where the sun shines on the meadow and on the bush group or tree group here. And 
I will also do the meadow, which has to be a little cooler in the background. And the green of the meadow has to be very cool here, where the light shines through the trees, and then get warmer the more we get to the foreground. So now I have blocked in all the main colors of my painting and all I have to do now is take the smaller brush and do the details of the foliage and of course you, you have to find your own way of expressing leaves because I do them in spots but I know of many artists who take the angular brush and make or make them a lot more detailed than I do but that is entirely up to you. It can all look good, just do whatever feels good to you. Um, as for the colors, I'm going to use a little more violet in the darks of my uh, trees and bushes in the foreground because I find that the complementary contrast between yellow and violet will add an interesting touch to my painting. And the whole trick if you do uh, backlight painting in landscape is that you make the leaves or whatever is in the way of the sun very, very light uh, next to the sun and also have some of the lights shine through the trees and then you turn into a sort of orangey color, almost the same as you see in the sky here. Oh, and by the way, a good trick, even if you can't see the trunk and the branches, you can make them visible by using lighter color. As, you, as I have used here, I, I used orange to pretend that the sun uh, sort of lights the trunks, but of course in reality you can't see that. This is an interpretation which makes it easier for the viewer to see what you see. And you can do it with uh, the, the warm color or you can do it with cooler colors. Simply make them a little lighter. It doesn't really matter. As a last impression, I would like to show you uh, how this painting would look in a frame. And I would strongly advise you, even though it is an acrylic painting, to frame it like an oil painting because, because the golden color of the frame really adds to the atmosphere of the painting. And with this impression of my painting, I would like to thank you all for watching and I surely hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, have a very good time. See you soon.